another trip begins. It's about three o'clock, mid-March. I'm uh, going to Bristol Airport. So we're just fighting our way through the lanes all around Bristol Airport. It's one of the most inaccessible airports in the world. Um, and I go to Poland. I've never been to Poland. Um, going from Poland and then to Germany and then I think back to Poland. Um, I've just been looking at the call sheet which tells me where I'm going, where I'm staying and I've realised I can't pronounce any of the names of the places I'm going to so I've got to spend the next two hours doing a crash course on trying to pronounce Polish words. Um, we're going to a castle which is a massive underground um, tunnel system built underneath it by the Nazis. I'm going to Auschwitz um, which I'm a bit apprehensive about, never been there before. Been to a few concentration camps but not Auschwitz. Um, and then uh, Frankfurt to talk to I think a, a German historian about the Nazis and uh, their economy and gold. Um, so it's going to be really exciting. I flew into Wrocław last night. We've driven um, about an hour and a half uh, to a lovely little horrible town in Poland where I'm going to be meeting a guy who's been um, hunting for a Nazi gold train since the 1950s. He's completely convinced there's one buried in a tunnel uh, quite near here. Um, still hasn't found anything though and I don't think anyone else believes him but bless him he's completely convinced he's even made a little model of it. Um, so I'm going to talk to him and see if he's going to give up on his quest or if he's going to convince me that actually there's some kind of truth to this. Well, that was a pretty eye-opening interview with this guy who was sitting in his garage with a little model train talking about the Jewish conspiracy, which is the reason why he hasn't been able to find this train full of Nazi gold. Um, he is 100% convinced that there is a train full of gold out there in the mountains somewhere in the tunnels that the, the Germans dug all around here. Um, those tunnels are certainly true and I'm going to be looking at some of them later which is going to be good. Um, but next up I'm going to talk to some historians who actually studied the period and know a bit about it rather than basically made up shit in their garage which is what this guy's done. It's quite a nice town square this. Um, but obviously lots and lots of snow. I was in the Burmese jungle three days ago and it was 36 degrees. Now it is two degrees. A um, bit of a hike up into the woods. Uh, we've made it. It's all very snowy and freezing here. Um, and this is where uh, the Nazis started to dig big tunnels, a huge tunnel complex under the mountains. No one has any idea really what they planned to do with it or how large it was going to be in the end and all that's left are these sort of tantalising, enormous spaces um, buried underground. So I'm about to go and have a look at one of those, very exciting. Take the camera inside quickly because okay. it doesn't want to catch the fish. Well, they were right about the tunnel. Look at this place. It's, it's like a Nazi cathedral. It's enormous. And we're right under under the mountain. We had to walk for about, I don't know, 10 minutes or so up through the tunnels to actually get to this place, which is a huge cavern, all reinforced with timber. And uh, yeah, wow, what a mind-blowing place this is. It just goes on and on and on. It's like the lair of a Bond villain. It's like a movie set. It's uh, staggering. There was a little train up here. Yeah. This is light gauge railway they would have used 
take everything out. Enormous quantities of rubble and earth to have moved. And it would have taken well, hundreds of engineers to actually work out how they're going to do it as well. Well, here they've got a collection of um, German military artifacts that they found in the tunnels, which is pretty amazing. Oh, let's see if you can have a look. Got helmets, weapons, shell cases, storage pots, gas masks, all sorts of things. Really makes you think that this place could have been lived in by thousands of people. That is a boat. So one of these tunnels is flooded and you can pull yourself along using these ropes. And uh, I've just done it. It's a bit spooky. The entrance to the cave system is protected by this bunker. Where we have one of these. Now this would cover the entrance. It's very narrow and they're very low as well, so it turn it into a complete death trap. Well, this tiny little door is the entrance to that enormous tunnel complex. It's absolutely massive and it's one of seven all around here, seven tunnel complexes. And what's really interesting about them is that no one really knows what they're there for and the tunnels hold no clues themselves. The only real solution, I think, is being able to find some archive material, some historical material, which will actually give us some idea of what was going on. The Russians would have it, because they came through here, and they were the first of those who discovered this place after the Germans had left. Possibly there, possibly Berlin. It's a project for someone. <laughs>